Hi everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Hadarsha. On behalf of all of us, I welcome you all to this webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we have a very interesting topic and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker who is going to talk about the research ethics, idea generation and so much more. So before we start, I would like to thank the Galvas for arranging such enlightening sessions and for their support and providing such a platform. And now Galvas has become the symbol of hope and a great gift to the community and a great opportunity for researchers, students and professionals for a source of knowledge, guidance and helping our community to shape them in a better way so that they could contribute to the world at large. So today our guest is very special and an amazing personality. Actually, he doesn't need any introduction because he is a very well-known personality, international level as well. For the sake of newcomers who don't know him, I would be happy to give a brief introduction of him. So today our distinguished guest speaker is a is an assistant professor at Lalpur Business School, Government College, University of Islamabad. Pakistan. He earned his PhD degree from Beijing Institute of Technology, China. He has uh, he has a broad insight into the topic of organizational sciences and has published several papers in high quality impact factor journal. He is also an editor of three books on tourism, guest speaker, article editor, and reviewer of several top tier journals. Currently, he is working as an editor with the Sage Publication and Frontier. As uh, <clears throat> publication and IGI Global USA. He has a vast experience in banking and the FMCG industry. His research areas are knowledge management, technology contract, innovation, organizational changes, and tourism. On the behalf of Kalwas, I would like to thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed uh, Wasim Bari, for taking the time to talk to us today. And thank you very much for accepting the invitation. It's a great honor to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, a soft reminder to the audience that uh, uh, Dr. Wasim will give the orientation regarding this topic uh, uh, for 10 minutes. And then we will take the questions live. Whatever the question you have, you can ask him directly. Uh, you can uh, email us or you can uh, ask uh, through online. So before we get started, uh, I would just uh, request the Dr. Wasim to please uh, uh, share your ideas and enlighten us on what is actually the research ethics and what are the different uh, points. For example, from author points, the publisher points, are the institution responsibility, and all these things. Please uh, over to Dr. Wasim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I'm uh, really happy today. I am speaking in this platform and I am really, really very thankful to uh, Dr. Heather Shah for inviting me such uh, uh, a fantastic platform where many renowned scholars and the speakers talk to you, the students and the scholars and the community as well. Uh, actually, uh, this topic uh, we choose because uh, uh, I personally feel uh, that the students and the scholars and the professionals who are involved in the research process or research activities, there are uh, some uh, really, really uh, serious issues with reference to uh, research ethics while uh, crafting the research ideas or developing the research papers or when they are entered into the publication process, data collection process and so on. Actually, uh, uh, from very basic uh, concept, I want to talk, uh, what is the research ethics? Or if I talk, uh, what is the ethic? Uh, actually, they are the moral values uh, of any community, uh, of any society, of any country, or lump sum, or collectively of the world. In general, uh, there is a no uh, general rule uh, where we can categorize the uh, ethics of the world, of the country. Actually, the norms and the values of the society determine the ethics of that society. So they vary it uh, from one community to another community. Uh, but there are some general principles like the uh, truth, be gentle, be positive, 
these are the some common things which are common in the world and other than some small things uh, depends on the culture of the society the norms of the society and we can then consider them as ethics and when uh, these norms and the values become stronger they get the place of the law so the same like in society uh, the research societies the research uh, community also have some uh, research ethics while conducting the research particularly we are uh, going to talk today uh, behavioral sciences and primary data research perspective so uh, what i saw uh, uh, from the last 4 to 5 years i continuously working in pakistan as a research scholar uh, i observed many things uh, from different perspectives uh, like uh, students perspective uh, the writers perspective uh, then the publishers the respondents uh, then the journals auditors perspective so first uh, thing i feel that um, the authors are the basic start where they need to consider the ethical principles or some ethics uh, or ethical values while conducting their research and uh, first of all uh, the first ethic which i believe which is very very important that is the sincerity towards own self actually the a lot of community of scholars and the writers the, who they are at initial stage they are not actually sincere with their own self they try to find some short uh, um, short routes short uh, uh, short methods to achieve the targets of research and in this way they find some uh, unethical uh, methods and ethical ways where they can get their degrees and the minimum requirement for their degrees so first of all the authors need to be sincere with their own self because if they will be sincere they can do a good and positive research so when you are sincere with yourself definitely you will be sincere with others positively so first of all when you are enter into the research be sincere with yourself when you are developing the idea be focused don't cheat with anyone uh, be uh, uh, clear and be positive with your supervisor and explain the realities in front of him in front of your colleagues and get the right ideas and uh, when you are in the process of research eventually you enter into the research uh, data collection and uh, literature review like that when you are collecting the literature you should be sincere with the Uh, literature providers means the scholars which already have produced the literature you should give the credibility or the credit to the scholars from where you are getting the ideas from where you getting the literature you should gently provide the credit to those scholars and when you enter into the methodology definitely you have to uh, uh, provide uh, privacy secrecy no autonomy anatomy and all other th all other things which are required to the data provider if you will cheat once they will cheat you many times because every time when scholar someone scholar will go to the community for data collection they will understand uh, and they will learn from the past experience which the other scholars do with them they will provide you not a sincere uh, opinion actually they will dot you so be positive be sincere with your uh, data providers with your uh, participants which are the real really important part of your research because if they are sincere if they are positive if they are devoting time for your research they are very important for you and you must remember that for consideration you should entertain in some way providing the gifts or providing uh, other uh, uh, tangible or intangible facilities to those uh, participants for their positive role in your research the most concern of the participants uh, regarding the data providing or presenting their opinion or sharing their uh, perceptions they want uh, security they want privacy they want to hide them self so uh, being a researcher you should try maximum to provide the level of satisfaction while they are providing the data 
you should not ask such type of questions which raise the tension or psychologically negative perception in the minds of the participants actually uh, when we are uh, going to ask the questions uh, to the participants there are the three to four types of the general questions we should cons uh, consider while uh, crafting the question or surveyor or the questionnaire sometimes we uh, draft the question in long detail the the questions are very in detail and that's why the student uh, the participants uh, not properly understand and they avoid to answer properly or they uh, try to hide some information because they actually did not understand properly and sometimes we uh, craft the question in very very uh, short manner just a, a phrased form and the respondent actually uh, did not understand the complete perspective of your question and the answer which they provide you they there may be some mistake in that answer so question should not be too large question should not be too small and third one question should not be hot one hot means when you ask the question you must consider the religious aspects cultural aspects values age gender and so on if you will ask the question and your question is crossing the cultural values if your question is crossing the religious values if you are hitting the gender then there will be problem maybe you cannot able to get the data or you will get the wrong data wrong answer and your search definitely will be wrong so question should not be too hot actually question should be proper meaningful and question should be sensible sensible means the question must consider the cultural values and religious values and ethnic perspectives of the respondent or the place where from your uh, you are collecting the data so these are the very important for the author's perspective then uh, he entered into the uh, publication process and uh, here i also want to uh, discuss the role of the organizations i mean the institutes or the universities when we uh, as a university uh, for institute or we are the supervisors when we create the stress on the students when we demand the quantity when we want the uh, performance in any way then the students or the scholars adopt the unethical behaviors they try to find the shortcuts so the universities should consider this scenario university should understand that this way we actually not producing the quality and genuine research actually we are producing the quantity of papers you will see on social media there are a lot of uh, people uh, they are the content writers they are providing you every type of facility you need the search papers you need the uh, uh, thesis you need the Uh, synopsis they are ready to serve not only ms not only the master classes but also for the phd even the for the post doc so if such type of facilities are offered and the students are taking by uh, paying the money it means that they are fulfilling the requirement of their degree or for their jobs actually that is not the research there is a fake data bogus data they are just Uh, collecting uh, the words and the literature from the internet and arranging them scientifically and sending to the journals for the publication so second one is the role of the institutes and the universities they should adopt some positive and constructive policies to control such type of negative activities the content uh, selling and content purchasing Uh, if they will not adopt the pol uh, policy to control such a uh, type of incidents then uh, be sure that there will be no researchers we are producing we are actually selling the degrees and people are buying the degrees and the third party which are the agencies or the agents they are actually doing their business so this is the case actually the third one is the journals journals are the very very important players in this game game of research 
actually uh, there are a lot of different indexing agencies which are providing the credibility to different uh, sort of uh, journals but unfortunately there are some loopholes on the end of publishers and the end of the indexing agencies and the end of the journals journals every journal uh, when uh, they develop their uh, uh, journals basic structure of the journal they design the board of directors uh, sorry board, uh, editorial board when they choose the editorial board four five or six uh, research scholars and they are very competent people the mature people but when journals start to uh, work and getting the uh, uh, search papers for review and for publication i rarely saw that the journals bother the editorial board to check whether this paper should publish or should not be published unanimously actually there are solo decisions there are one or two associate editors are there they are they are they are on pay they are uh, receiving the papers if their perception is positive then general paper is okay if they their perception is not positive even the paper is very good the author is very fantastic they will deny even if your paper is not good but you have the relation or you have to you have approach to the associate editor then there is okay and sometimes editor in chief has no information on such type of practices so the journals need to activate uh, positively their editorial boards to uh, check the every paper unanimously and took the decision on such type of papers uh, whether they are publishable or not and moreover the journals should maintain the standard there should not be discrimination uh, uh, from the uh, country perspective geographical perspective or the racism should not be involved there the editorial board should be positive equal and just like uh, the law is blind the editor should be blind while evaluating the quality of the research papers this is a role of the journals and the most important thing when uh, the journals get the paper for review they should not waste the time of the authors they should consider the time value of the authors because uh, the uh, authors which are involved in the degree process they need to publish paper one or two paper within their time frame but what the journals do they did not bother the authors issues they follow their own priorities they prefer if they think that the paper is very good but their uh, volume or their issue number of papers are completed in some specific issue they did not bother it they rejected and said that we received lot of papers and unfortunately we are not uh, to publish that paper although it has very good quality then what it is mean it is not the ethics but sometimes the experience that one and half years your paper is rejected by the journal by saying that it is not in the scope of the journal what is mean after 18 months you are rejecting a paper by saying that this paper is not in scope it means you have no time to check that the paper in scope or not and sometimes i saw that the same papers the same papers with same variables are already published in that particular journal so there are some unethical practices on the behalf of the journals uh, there should be uh, focused by the journals and should be considered and reconsider these uh, kind of practices and editorial boards in real sense should be active in the journals and the last one is the publishers publishers uh, they have plenty of journals in every field in every perspective and they are just running that a huge uh, uh, organization uh, white collar organizations and the scholarly work but there are so many loopholes where the publisher did not bother sometimes uh, they waste the time while accepting the paper but publishing time is very late the issue number volume number is very late so this type of activity is also hard sometimes they uh, allow the open access journals and that uh, type of open access journals sometimes compromise on the quality and adopt the unethical practices and the last one most importantly which i saw uh, while uh, practicing as a uh, author or as a researcher 
when we submit the paper to the journal or to the publishers they uh, get the sign of the authors uh, virtually sign of the authors that this paper is not published anywhere this paper is not submitted anywhere this paper is not under consideration in any other journal so if author is signing these kind of uh, statements why not journal as a counter not signing that this paper will be reviewed within this time frame this paper will get the decision this uh, time frame this paper will be published in this time frame this kind of activities journals should also ensure positively these are the ethics but if the author is only following the ethical practices and journals in joining the uh, autonomous body as an autonomous body and join the uh, 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 authorities and whenever they want they publish the paper and whenever they want they reject the paper and whenever they want they hold the paper they send the revisions and after revisions they reject the paper by saying that these papers are not in the scope of the journal this is rubbish this is not justifiable this is unethical practice by the journals and the publishers so we should not consider uh, should not consider one perspective only the author's perspective they are doing the wrong things it is happening in everywhere we need to think uh, consider the organizations the institutes the universities they should uh, think about it again if we are imposing the pressure on the authors or the students to produce the paper in any way they will buy the content they will not produce the content and if they will buy the content then what is the benefit of this degree they can directly give you money and with paper and get the degree so this is a simple case so this is not the way so this is my perspective regarding uh, students regarding authors the organizations and the journals and the publishers as well now you students have and the colleagues have the opportunity to discuss any questions or any type of yeah. thank you very much uh, dr mohammad wasim you have a very great insight to this uh, research ethics and uh, i was uh, enjoying what you were saying and uh, what a great start you have said that i like the phrase that uh, you should be sincere with yourself first and then sincere to your work that is the most important uh, i think the trait that uh, one researcher should have that uh, whenever he is conducting or she is conducting a research that person should be sincere to his or her work only then then uh, you can take the another step and then i like the way you categorize the things like as an author what are the different things as a uh, the publisher as the journal as the role of institution what nicely you have said and what are the different problems with that and how can we identify uh, the problem and then then we can go for the solutions as well so in this regard uh, first we uh, first question we uh, the, the students are asking that uh, dr wasim who is responsible for ensuring research is conducted ethically please enlighten them that who what is the governing body actually uh, uh, i already uh, shared that that is a, a, a combined responsibility of all uh, these four stakeholders uh, the authors the organizations uh, the institutes or universities the journals the publishers we collectively need to realize that the importance of ethics because student if we allow the student uh, the real time to work and uh, organizations design the comprehensive policies to control the unethical practices and the industry contribute positively uh, for the research and development so i think so we can control these type of unethical practices otherwise as i shared before if we impose all the responsibility on the students so they have uh, the opportunity of social media there are so many agents are there they can cover all type of documents which will prove that this research is ethical but if all uh, organizations Uh, universities will really realize that how we can control such type of activities uh, such time uh, type of negative activities then we can control design positive policy share with the uh, uh, scholars and get their confidence on it and 
uh, practically the supervisors and the uh, organizations create a research board positively uh, which they, uh, which should review the research progress time to time to check such type of negative activities so i hope so this collective effort can control the unethical practices in research specifically the organizational sciences or behavioral sciences yeah very nicely said, Dr. Rosin. Uh, okay, we have a very interesting question. Uh, Dr. Rosin, they are asking you that since you are the editor of the journals as well, please tell us, is it good practice or ethically right for an editor or associate editor to publish his or her own article in the journal? Very interesting question. Uh, yes. I'm not uh, uh, mentioning the name uh, of the organization or the university or the editors uh, uh, actually four to five years back uh, uh, in 2015 uh, web of science uh, graduate analytics uh, launched the esci indexing emerging source citation index in 2015 and uh, 2016 uh, one journal from pakistan first time uh, entered in this indexing this was the only one journal from the business perspective, management sciences perspective, that entered in this indexing. Mm -hmm. And what happened after uh, one and a half years, this journal uh, come rejected from that indexing. Oh. Uh, on that time, uh, when I searched out and investigate what happened actually, I found that uh, Almost in every issue, there was one or two paper of the editor, mm -hmm. associate editor, or the uh, uh, members of the editorial board. So this type of practices was a reason that this, that journal was rejected uh, by the Web of Science. So uh, this is an example which I given you uh, practically, but in journal perspective, when you uh, in general perspective you understand that uh, for example this universe example of this universe is like that if the allah or god after developing this model also participate in this system in day-to-day -day management in day-to-day -day activities how this system can exist the same way the models of this world the organizations when the final authority, the ultimate authority in any organization, when that authority entered into the share of that organization, the system collapsed. Mm -hmm. System is compromised. So the same case with the journals as an organization, if the journal, we consider the journal as organization, if the editors and the associate editors try to uh, get maximum benefit and compromise some uh, policies and get published their own papers as a co-author or the principal author eventually what happened the journal collapsed its quality journals is rejected by the high indexing agencies yes. and this is is journal obviously definitely unethical practices actually uh, the editor or the associate editor should try their best to go upward if they are super uh, editing uh, some uh, lower level journal or middle range journal they should prefer to go upward they should not compete with the uh, fr fresher researcher the new researchers and get the number of uh, papers or no, quantity of the paper this is not the case with the editor editor is the system maker and if he will enter or she will enter into the system the system will collapse simply yeah. Yeah. very nice very nicely said dr Wasim. uh now we have another question uh, which is a common question a lot of uh, same related questions have been asked by the different researchers and students that what is scientific validity in terms of uh, research ethics please enlighten us uh, with perspective to question here yes okay so uh, there are the two practices we generally uh, uh, take while conducting the research. One, we are uh, actually developing their own instrument for the data collection. And the other ways we are adopting the previous questionnaires. Uh, and uh, after conducting the pilot study, we collect the data. 
uh, what we actually do wrong here uh, first of all when we uh, use a previous instrument uh, i observed that uh, several authors or the scholars uh, reframe that uh, that uh, type of uh, instrument they uh, sometimes they miss the questions and in generally they shows that they are not changing anything but they are uh, changing actually and when they are changing it means that we are compromising the instrument which is already uh, proved and published in the previous uh, research so one thing is this a second one is the uh, developing new instrument while developing the new instrument we also need to consider the perspective of the question quality the uh, perspective culture and so on like these things when we once we develop the questionnaire we conduct the pilot study and uh, when we conduct the pilot study we genuinely and positively should review the uh, instrument quality and the uh, nature of the questionnaire and uh, sometimes uh, the authors uh, are confident that their uh, instrument is very good and it is very uh, nicely developed and they go to the market for collection of the data but the respondents uh, respondents are not actually understand what happened then they just tick the question and uh, hand over to the uh, authors this kind of research is just a wastage of time we are not here this ty uh, type of research uh, to discuss or to publish the, that is uh, just a wastage of time actually uh, a genuine uh, data collection is a foundation of the uh, genuine research and uh, what we should do we should uh, 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 should go to the uh, participants the managers of the organization like we get the permission for the, the, the from that manager but before getting the permission we should explain the objective of our study we should present the proper true picture what we are actually going to do and uh, we should get the uh, trust of the manager and assent of the uh, manager and when he assure you or she assure you regarding your research then should you should interact with your uh, participants directly and then you get the consent free consent is very much important and very uh, popular term used in the uh, primary data research and uh, then we should uh, make them relax psychologically and uh, when they are relaxed we should request them to fill the questionnaire and positively we show that what the benefits they can get by filling this questionnaire what is the consideration involved in this questionnaire and uh, confidential uh, confidential perspective is very very important in this perspective if you are not providing the psychological security i am not discussing the physical security if you are not providing the psychological security to the participants definitely will they will not positively involve your research and they will not provide you proper data secondly if you are not providing some sort of consideration like the tangible benefits some time of pencils some time of candies some time of uh, gift hampers like that then they also will not positively involve by filling this questionnaire and more importantly if your questionnaire will not be interesting and uh, your way of conducting the survey will not be interesting they will just take uh, the, that time uh, wastage of time and just tick 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 and hand over to you specifically so if you are considering these all type of things then i think your research will be genuine and uh, the the quality of your research will be better and credibility of the different sources we are from where you getting the data and the uh, literature if you are providing the proper credibility all of those resources definitely i hope you can get the positive results from your research yeah very well explained very nicely said dr wasim thank you uh, dr wasim you have highlighted a very uh, uh, interesting issue that your questionnaire should be uh, concise and it should not be too long and uh, in your first session you described about the psychological pressure the quest the way the people ask question is something really terrifying uh, i was uh, going through one questionnaire that's my personal experience that uh, mm -hmm. the questionnaire was uh, all about the terrorism they were collecting data regarding terrorism but they were so mm -hmm. direct questions that uh, i i got afraid at that time 
because it was taking uh, to the level that uh, will you be become a terrorist if certain things are happen so what's your take on that should the researcher be that, that level direct so that they could ask the question that you will become a terrorist uh, are you going towards that thing you are seeing yourself in that way thank you very much a very uh, uh, nice uh, point you have uh, highlighted actually uh, what i feel and what i uh, read in the literature or different books of uh, the research methodologies uh, actually the author should be passive yeah always we as an author should be passive when you start to play your role as an active with an active consent then some issues will be there actually when you are crafting your idea don't impose your consent your desire your choice your favoritism your liking disliking so be passive from idea when you are involving uh, the literature uh, uh, different arguments of different authors where from that place you should get the rational rational point you should not uh, uh, you should not go uh, in favor of someone specific author or some uh, some specific argument where you like that one the same like when you enter into the methodology sorry and uh, then you uh, come on to the question here actually uh, we should uh, not ask the question to the responded we should present the situation to the respondent actually what i understand that uh, actually uh, when we do some mistake in question crafting what we do actually we ask the question actually but what i uh, think we should present the scenario we should present the situation and then we should ask the perception of that respondent on that scenario so this is the uh, i think a very positive way to get the right opinion for example uh, many of us do the research on dark triads the narcissism uh, psychopathy like that so these are also our negative uh, traits of any personality and we if we are directly asking someone are you narcissist or you are, are you prefer your own self only so who will respond uh, rationally no one so you should need to present the scenario you, we should present the situation actually in the front of the respondent and then he or she will read that situation he or she will understand that situation and when he or she will compare that situation his or her experience then they will provide you their true experience or perception and you will get the right idea Yeah. so i think so uh, we should not directly ask the questions we should always try to craft the situation the scenarios the propositions to get the right answer specifically when we are getting the uh, constructs uh, questions regarding the constructs negative perspectives so these kind of perspectives definitely just like the terrorism we should present the situations not uh, uh, naming any country or the religion or the race or the culture or ethnic perspectives we should present the scenarios only so that is a, i think the best way to get the right answers that's very interesting answer uh, i loved your answer dr wasim uh, you have mentioned the two important things in that first uh, we should go for passive approach and secondly we should create a situation and so that the respondent could compare him or herself in situation and then answer to us very nicely said that's the benefit of uh, talking to the expert and you get the right answer for that thank you very much okay we have a very interesting question from noman abbas uh, he is asking that sir what is meant by ethical research design actually what we have discussed last one hours or less than one hour that is also included in the research design yes So yes. all these yes. things, if you will review the previous, all these things are included in research design, while sure. crafting the idea, getting the literature, methodology, and so on. All these things are included in your research design. Yes. So Very please nice. consider all perspectives. Yes. Uh, we have another question, Dr. Osim from Zahiruddin, who is an MPhil student. 
he wants to ask the question that whether it is ethical to conduct the research uh, problem or to investigate the problem in the organization which you are working currently is it ethical of course ethical of course ethical uh, because uh, uh, there is a two type of generally known the research types are the basic research and the applied research and when you are working in the organization uh, actually you are uh, involved in the applied research you are practically observing the problem and you are actually the researcher who understand the scenario what is happening there and it is a uh, your organization should be grateful to you uh, if you are at, uh, participating in such type of activity and you want to investigate the causes behind that problem and uh, definitely but what should uh, what can be unethical if you are not getting the permission from your organization if you are not getting the permission for uh, your colleagues uh, your supervisors uh, or the if you are uh, working that time uh, type of activity uh, during your normal duty hours so if you are getting proper permissions from your organization your colleagues and all, so on so that is a very fantastic and actually you will do the fantastic job because you know that what is the scenario and what is the causes behind that scenario yes very nicely said and this is how you will come up with the solution of the problem of course they of will, course yeah, they, they will appreciate it but uh, your point is very important that they must first uh, take the consent from the organization and concern authority that would be the good one yeah yes uh, doctor do we have another interesting question uh, the person wants to ask the question that during the research collaboration uh what can you do uh, sorry uh, in your publication process what can you do to protect your intellectual property during the review process it's i think very nice question yes uh, uh there are the two uh, different perspectives uh, which i have observed uh, you are talking about the uh, publication process but i am starting from the idea generation process uh when i uh, came back from uh, the china farm after getting my phd and starting uh, teaching in the university uh, i observed that every second student uh, was hiding their ideas from each others and they thought that if uh, i will share uh, my idea uh, which was uh, not very groomed yet if I, uh, he or she will share uh, their ideas with others their ideas will be stolen and i was surprised all is possible because every a uh, good journal and uh, good papers share their future such directions for the research they are floating the ideas especially those uh, research papers which uh, they are only conduct the research up to the uh, framework theoretical framework and then invite the researchers for empirical investigation so what is possible uh, dear students once uh, one thing you must understand that no one can uh, steal your ideas yes ensure it how because you have own mind of crafting that idea you will have your own words crafting that idea you will have your own uh, references you you will have own citations you uh, drafting your paper you have own style you have you will have your own methodology you will have your own discussion point your results will be different your participants will be different then how it is possible your idea can be stolen so first thing you must share your ideas but with the uh, people who have the mind of research not everyone you will waste your time so sharing your idea doesn't mean the people can steal your ideas if it is so easy then everyone can steal uh, the idea of everyone so this is not the way yes. first one second one where when we submit the uh, paper in the journal as you submit the paper into the journal that paper is marked in as intellectual property back end of the journal actually that is your property and when you get the email with pdf copy if you guys have ex experience with the scholar one submission process you get the pdf copy of your paper with the monogram of that journal the name of that journal and with date it means that from that date when you submit your paper that property legally uh, registered on your name by getting the pdf copy 
of that paper so no one can steal if he or she someone will do this you can just send that uh, pdf and you can claim that this is your paper and someone steal your data or your search paper and it is easily to prove so don't worry about it but again if you are submitting your paper some third class journal some bogus journal then you should expect it this kind of activities because they are bogus then definitely they will do the bogus work so uh, avoid the uh, third class journals always prefer the known publishers always adopt the genuine process of paper submission don't send the paper by email to the journals such type of journals always prefer to submit online portal that portal will protect your paper by sending you the proof that you have submitted the paper on from uh, from that date you and you will get the uh, acknowledgement of that uh, submission so this is the way don't worry about it yeah thank you very much uh, dr wasim very nicely answered the question that you must focus on the quality journals because uh, they will be uh, going through a process like you mentioned the scholar one etc and then you get the pdf later on you can claim you can prove your uh, idea as well very nicely said okay dr wasim we have another very interesting question that is related to the uh, collaboration issues the authorship data ownership that who owns the data and who can make use of the same data in the future uh, please enlighten us uh, if, uh, i actually uh, uh, if uh, you mean that we are discussing about the uh, as a student and supervisor data sharing uh, they 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 meant to ask that if we have the four author for example and uh, mm -hmm. they collectively uh, collect the data and they published one paper now uh, mm -hmm. for the second paper who owns this data so that they could use for a future publication the uh, data belongs to which author they wants to uh, they want to discuss yes please there there are the two uh, two ways uh, first one is Uh, when you write your first paper if you are also sharing your data file with uh, that paper and uh, usually uh, uh, several journals uh, demand you mention your role as author in that paper uh, usually before the reference list if you mention there uh, uh, the first author do this second author do this third author collect the data and fourth uh, author prove the uh, manuscript it means that you all are admitting that this data belongs to the third author then there is no question you all provide the already agreement that this data collected by that person and it is belong to that person specifically and moreover you also share the data but if you are uh, claiming that all activities you guys perform collectively or interchangeably and also you share the data file uh, with your journal it means that no one can use singly that data okay. definitely if someone will claim you can share the reference of that paper you already share that data and that uh, that journal or that uh, such paper you all three or four authors contributed equally and collectively mm -hmm. so uh, this is not the way but if you did not share your data with your journal and there is no proof who collected the data and who analyzed that data it means that four are equal anyone can use and you have no right to claim uh, on that uh, type of data unless you have some uh, concrete evidence uh, uh, to prove that you collected the data uh, solely and you uh, have the right to publish a research paper by analyzing that data so on sole paper, uh, individually so this is a way Thank you very much, Dr. Wasim, for a nice answer. Uh, okay, we have another uh, question related to this uh, research design. They want to ask about the when we collect the data through online. So they want to ask that are there specific ethical guidelines for conducting research online, particularly the data collection method? Uh, uh, actually, uh, there is a uh, in general there is a same rule. Uh, like physical or online but uh, one thing which is most important that we are not sure that the respondent is genuinely have the same property which actually we are demanding sometimes uh, the respondents with 2 3 4 5 ids uh, he is on social media 
and if the five different ideas the single person is sharing his experience or her experience it means that the data is not genuine so uh, when we plan we have plan to collect the data online we should choose specific research groups uh, specific interest groups and we should uh, clearly mention that uh, what are the objective of the research and get the confident of the respondents and those people who are really interested to share their experience and provide you answer you should share the uh, questionnaire with them if you will generally share the people will generally answer you will not get the right perception right answers from the people of course yeah. very nicely said okay we have, we have one another interesting question uh, that's uh, the dr wasim since you are the author reviewer uh, the question is animal ethics that uh, what do i do if my research involve animals so what are the animal ethics very interesting Actually, uh, the social scientists are usually not involved in the animal ethics uh, in general rule in general rule is uh, we should not harm any living thing in general if you are harm harming any living thing the birds the animals the plants or greenery if you are violating the even the water pollution because directly uh, and indirectly they are linked to the living things so if you are polluting the air these all types of things are considered unethical in research so animals are very significant part but in other perspective you also understand that when we do experiment uh, in research we should think and we should consider greatest interest you see that sometimes we also do experiment on the humans for example we are developing a new formula for the uh, medicine of the cancer patients mm -hmm. definitely you need volunteers to do practice on for that medicine you are newly developed mm -hmm. chances of death are there reactions are there but you you have the argument that if my experiment experiment will be successful mm -hmm. the benefit will be huge sure. the same case if we are sacrificing one or two animals or the birds or the creature for the benefit of the human kind or the larger perspective with logical reasons with positive reasons of course we can take such type of initiatives but we must have the logical and reasonable arguments on it mm -hmm. very nice very nice dr wasim Okay, we have uh, another question from Sayed Zishan Heather, who is an MPhil student. Uh, he wants to ask the question that uh, uh, there is a misconception, which uh, uh, we would like to ask you to remove it. That uh, can someone take the MPhil idea to the PhD as well? Because uh, Sayed Zishan Heather is saying that uh, he heard that uh, you cannot take the same idea of MPhil to the PhD. Please clarify this issue. Uh, in Pakistan or uh, abroad? Yes, in Pakistan. He is a Bahia uh, University student. Actually, idea has not issue, uh, but if uh, you must have the novelty extension of that uh, idea. Uh, normally, uh, the uh, concept is uh, your supervisor, MS supervisor, should not be PhD supervisor because in that case your knowledge will be uh, stored or will be stopped in some limited specific areas. by changing your uh, supervisor you get new ideas because every supervisor every researcher has a own um, uh, experience and own perspectives by sharing with different people you get the new knowledge but uh, uh, if you are saying that the idea the extension of that is uh, that idea is very positive but if you are truly extending that idea but if you are just adding one variable as a mediator or adding as a moderator one variable or by changing the context uh, of data collection that is a not a novelty actually that is a just uh, you are uh, changing the perspective of your uh, research if you are generally you should definitely go uh, significantly different perspectives by adopting the previous idea so there is no foundation actually okay very nicely said dr wasim uh, we are getting very interesting questions Uh, now another question is the doctor seem is that uh, 
please enlighten us on the uh, software of plagiarism. Uh, what does that uh, mean that your plagiarism report should be less than 20%? What is the uh, uh, scale for that? Why they say only 20% reduce? 10% is not plagiarism? Yes, please. Uh, actually, uh, uh, usually my uh, students also ask me uh, the, regarding the plagiarism and I, I never recommend any software, uh, just one software and they're the heart of the author. Every author knows that uh, how uh, he is uh, carrying on their research. Uh, if you are, if your heart is saying that there is a plagiarism, definitely it will be, will be a plagiarism and maybe no one uh, software in the world can be capable to discover that type of plagiarism because you, because you can manipulate very easily. You can uh, change the synonymous, you can change the sentence structure and there's so many ways to change the uh, words of the paper. So uh, I think and I recommend that to the scholars, to the researchers, please always adopt the one software which is your heart. If your heart is with you, is uh, ensuring you, if your heart is satisfied, it means there is a zero plagiarism, definitely, because you're, if you are genuine researcher. Secondly, if we are talking about the 20% uh, plagiarism or 10% plagiarism, uh, plagiarism, 1% is also plagiarism. For example, if you are uh, uh, cheating someone and collecting the formula just which, which has a weightage of just one percent it is also plagiarism on the other hand sometimes we write the paper and we use the terminologies different terminologies and uh, uh, regularly and repeatedly we are using uh, that type of terminologies and methodology perspectives that's why uh, our paper uh, get the signal from the software that we have 10 percent 20 percent plagiarism actually uh, we are not involved in the plagiarism, but it is showing we have the plagiarism because we are using the terminology which are frequently used in the literature. Yes. So we need to uh, justify that time uh, that type of uh, plagiarism. Sometimes we can reduce up to some extent, but if you are generally true, uh, definitely your research will be covered into 10, 11, 12 percent. That's why we are say, say, said that if you have the 10 percent plagiarism might be some terminologies, specific words, table numbers, high headings, they are involved in the, uh, that type of plagiarism. So that is not the issue. Yes, very interesting. And I could see the comment that uh, they liked your comment that you should be sincere at heart. So let your heart guide you in the right direction. Very nicely said. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we have another question that uh, uh, what do you think as a researcher, as an editor, as an author, that what are the contemporary challenges in research ethics? I told you the social media, the biggest challenge. Yes. The Very biggest nice. challenge, uh, uh, contemporary era, that is a social media and the business of uh, content. True. Business of content is much popular in Western countries as compared to Asians. Yes. Because if you have experienced or uh, if you have some uh, information a uh, lot of inquiries we received from the western university students they are belong to arabic countries or the african countries and sometimes asian countries asian countries uh, for example the china because pakistanis or indians or the sri lankans are usually are not involved because they have not money so uh, the rich countries uh, students uh, who they go to the uh, western countries and they want to get the degree when they receive the assignments from the supervisors and the teachers they are not capable to perform these type of assignments and then they uh, they are search or in searching to find some content writer they can fulfill their requirements so these activities are actually generating these countries students and the the cause and the uh, reason behind that is the supervisors who are not who they have not a comprehensive policy to control their students. So uh, these activities are just money generator activities, and usually I found that the Western countries journals and the 
companies and the editing companies are involved this kind of business content writing and content editing like that so westerns should not adopt the double standards they should design one policy if they have the quality journals they their teacher are adopting the quality journals they should bound the students to follow the quality policy regarding the publication they are not uh, getting the content by paying the money so the social media is actually the easiest source of getting the money and the second one is the literature availability uh, on soft uh, methods and easily accessible easily manipulatable uh, it is the another way the students which are doing they're getting the data from four five six seven papers and then they manipulate it and they are using different softwares and eventually they uh, draft a new research paper the role of technology is equally positive and negative if we are the positive mind person we will use the technology positive and if we are evil genius then definitely we will use this technology to get the and manipulate the data manipulate the uh, research and get the published so technology and social media actually uh, playing the unethical role the agent on the social media actually playing the unethical role that's very interesting dr waskin you have highlighted a very big uh, point that uh, the role of technology uh, which is double edged sword the same goes for the uh, media as well that uh, since uh, now uh, we can have a productive session like this to create awareness and to contribute to the world at the same time we can use the media platform for manipulation as well so again very rightly said that uh, it's uh, it completely depending upon you that how do you use the technology as well as the media but one has to be what you referred in the first three two sentence sentences that you should be sincere then once you are exactly. sincere you will be doing everything uh, very properly very nice to yes uh, just i want to uh, share one uh, more thing here Please, please. You see the old, uh, all scientists, uh, the great scientists who discovered fantastic uh, things, uh, which brought the uh, uh, throughout the world, bring the big changes, yes. like the Newton, Edison, so many. Yes. They are, were not working in collaboration. They are not writing paper in collaboration. They are not interacting every day on social media. They are not interacting these kind of activities. They are not writing the paper for money. they did just one or two invention in the whole life but they provide the genuine benefit to the human mankind yeah but currently we are not doing this we researchers are getting the money we are getting the fame we are uh, manipulating the research by getting the popularity in the uh, academia and the scientists and the researchers world so we should actually do the work for the benefit of the humanity and once you will did one or two research paper will be published in the whole uh, life if they are genuine and you are genuinely did these papers definitely you will get the reward genuinely in the long uh, life period of yes. course yeah very right you said and that's what we say that uh, do focus on long term not on short term so that mm -hmm. uh, you can contribute to the world very nicely said dr rosen okay we have another question that uh, uh, ethics vary from place to place so then what to do are uh, we have the universal moral code of conduct as well yes please uh, actually uh, when we are getting the data uh, uh, first i uh, in a uh, few questions before i said that you, the question should not be too hot yes question uh, should be according to the specific culture and the religious values ethnic values and norms of that society so if you think that you are bound to ask the same question but the two different countries two different societies so you have to develop the propositions by considering your main idea and your question by considering the values of the societies but you will ask the same questions if the if in china uh, you are conducting the research you need to bother the values of chinese people what they prefer and what they did not, not prefer and if you are conducting the same research comparative research and you have the same question need to ask in pakistan 
you need also consider the values of religion you also consider the values of pakistan and you need maybe you need to rephrase that question with same meanings and you can get the idea but in any way you need to respect the participant religion and culture and specifically culture uh, believe me and keep in mind always culture is much 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 stronger than religion the people compromise on the religion but did not compromise on the culture because uh, in pakistan if you, you will say that if someone is not offering prayer five times no one will mind but in uh, pakistani culture if some girl will wear the skirt everyone will be touch, uh, will be touchy and will be stressful and the media will be shouting the religious scholars will be outside yes. because this is a culture if yes. the people are uh, doing the marriages on the friday many uh, the people who are uh, uh, with the brat they are not offering the juma prayer no one will mind but in the same uh, marriage ceremony if you are not performing the rasam of mehndi hmm. many people have the uh, criticism on you because you are violating the culture sure. so you you should must understand the culture is the basic thing while crafting your research questions and while crafting your questionnaire yes. keep in mind the society if you are doing the comparative studies yes very nicely said what a knowledge you have given uh, wonderful answers uh, dr rosim i really i'm really enjoying your session the way you are responding to the question and the way the people are commenting on your session that's so fabulous uh, thank you very much uh, we have one interesting question related to your personal experience that uh, dr rosim since you were in a uh, china for your phd uh how was the culture at china regarding to the research ethics yes please uh china uh, has uh, both type of cultures uh, chinese uh, are working uh, very hard chinese are working very hard and uh, i think maybe you know that uh, web of science specifically allocated the indexing to the chinese one is ssci one is a cssci chinese social science index separately and sci because chinese are producing quality work in their local language mm -hmm. and what i observed that the chinese students are very hard worker regarding their research and their supervisor also not giving the spare time and the place to publish the low quality papers a low quality publication and their labs are fantastic and the world class material is available their machinery is available they are doing they are doing the fantastic job second one second one is a part of the international scholars which they are studying they are they are working in china they the scholars which are working in china in different universities actually they are hired by the universities to produce the research research means number of publications because now it's a game of the ranking china want to get the highest ranking of their universities internationally for that sake they need english language international publications because they because they will get the citations and they will get the popular they are publishing in the chinese perspective papers so one is the hired people and second one the students from pakistan and other different countries who are getting the phd and master degrees in china they are also producing the uh, uh, work there and currently the top ranking universities of china they are producing just impact factor publications mm -hmm. so you should understand that if they are producing just impact factor publication it means that they are not compromising on the publications Ten years before, seven year or eight years before, China was just producing the research that was a very uh, bad quality and low quality quality. But now China is totally changed, and they are just producing the impact factor publication. Even if you are the student of PhD in China, and uh, 
at least you have to produce two impact factor publications before submitting the research proposal and now you understand that if you are capable to publish two impact factor papers then the research synopsis and thesis is not a big deal for you so china is changing uh, the and it is improving the quality so both cases are there content is selling many ways in china the business on but the similarly in the same way china is also working on the quality with the support of their local community and world class researcher they are paying the huge money they are investing the huge money on the research and you know that the chinese universities are now in the top ranking every third or fourth pub publication impact factor journals someone chinese is the author or the co-author in that publication now we should understand the chinese role in the world research publications yeah very nicely said dr wasim and uh, this is very true i was uh, uh, downloading different papers and then i could see that every now and then we uh, i found the researchers uh, the chinese researcher over there what you mentioned in your uh, this talk as well that they they have focused a lot on the publication side and they have a lot of funding for that and that's why you rightly mentioned that their universities are now in top ranking uh, universities in the world very nicely said and we could see that they have trained you very well and we could see that uh, the way you are answering and the way you are satisfied with their research culture and the way you learn by yourself and mashallah you are growing very well and we pray for you as well that in the future you grow similarly and we will be following you thank you very much uh, since we have the limitation of time since we are receiving a lot of questions but we uh, don't have that much time for that uh, one last question dr rosim uh, we would like to ask uh, that what is the difference between anonymity and confidentiality please elaborate this, this is also a uh, uh, question related to methodology okay uh, the two words have the same uh, the destination but with the different uh, perspectives and different uh, things we should consider uh, confident uh, confidentiality uh, usually refers to which the researchers know the identity of the research project and search participants like that but uh, anonymity uh, usually when the researchers did not know directly who is a participants who the individual subjects who are involved in the research and they are just getting the data there is a no highlight on the participant the questionnaire that the, who is the respondent normally when you are conducting the interview and getting the information uh, you need to uh, take the uh, confidentiality of that respondents and you keep you you should you must uh, uh, take the positive measures and constructive measures to maintain the confidentiality of the participants but when you are uh, conducting the survey and you are not getting the name of the respondent you are not getting the specific information of the uh, authors uh, sorry respondents uh, then you are actually uh, you are creating the anonymity and you after getting the 300 or 400 questionnaires you did not know who is respond what so confidentiality is there when you know the respondent and anonymity is there when you did not know the participant or the respondent so the both way the responsibility is the uh, shoulder on the shoulders of the uh, researcher and he should uh, understand that and he should uh, maintain such kind of even he should maintain the privacy as well the privacy is equally important sometimes you just need to know the uh, phenomena from from some specific person hiddenly to know that what are the actual reasons behind that and then you start the research so you need the uh, should, so you should need to maintain the privacy confidentiality and the anatomy uh, all three things are equally important yes very nicely said dr osim uh, I'm enjoying your this uh, answer, question answer session uh, too much that I don't want to end this session and uh, we would like to have another sessions with uh, with you as well so that you keep on answering the different things and removing the misconception from our upcoming researchers, the students and the professional because the way you are answering the people are liking it very well that you not only explain it but you also give the practical examples 
and you are correlating the different things which i like very much and uh, i really appreciate uh, your answers and i love the way you answer so finally uh, what's your message to the world as a researcher trainer learner professional supervisor and professor first of all a very uh, important message i want to give to the pakistani society especially uh, don't uh, don't be clever don't be clever if someone is sincere and sincerely helping you uh, in general community and specifically in research don't be uh, clever and don't be cheater actually they are positively supporting you number one second one respect the hard worker respect the intelligent persons if you will respect them you can get the benefit true if you will disrespect them they will get the distance from you and you will lose so don't be cheater don't be clever uh, while uh, living in the uh, such community and don't cheat others and don't think that the others did not know you be positive first one second one is for the general uh, community uh, in the global world we should share we should share our knowledge ideas experience and if possible sometimes sometime we should share for the benefit of the others trust me this is the way to get the benefit from the world from each other if we believe that this is the true a global village you cannot live single perspective you need to share and adopt the other perspective to survive successfully in the universe so i suggest and recommend all the scholars don't hide knowledge don't cheat others share the knowledge request the hard workers and intelligent people and get the benefit in the form of knowledge and in the form of time you will enjoy and you will feel that you will grow collectively thank you very much dr wasim a very great message to the world and particularly for pakistani students and that's what we need a lot and uh, i like the uh, way you said that we must contribute and give back to the society and that's very important and for that matter we must be genuine first if we are genuine we are sincere to the ourselves and to the world only then we can contribute so uh, thank you very much dr wasim for such a wonderful question answer session in the last i would say that it is extremely important to follow the research ethics as it offers a road map of all the activities which you will carry out in your research journey so follow the guidelines and enjoy the research journey. so that is all we have uh, 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 this for today thank you very much once again dr mohammad wasim bari uh, i would like to thank our audience who join us uh, if you have any additional question about this uh, today's session you can email us you can email to the speaker as well uh, we will share his credential the uh, his uh, uh, email account as well as the his social uh, media account so then you can interact with him further you can ask questions from him he has a vast knowledge regarding the phd the phd journey the research and the funding opportunity so many things he is the expert he is the guider he is the mentor uh, take advantage of him uh, he is asset for uh, the world and particularly for pakistan we should uh, be always uh, seeking guidance from such kind of people to guide us in the right direction and uh, thank you very much once again the dr wasim for accepting our invitation and giving your valuable time to the kalwas and this, this is the way you contribute to the world and to the uh, our community once again we are very thankful to you for taking uh, out your precious time for us so that's all for this uh, today's session inshallah we will be coming up with more session in future with the dr mohammad wasim bari as well uh, stay tuned bye bye thank you bye, -bye.